This is about as macro an environment as I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I think most people's read on it is probably wrong. As a visitor on Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad podcast, macro investor Raul Powell provided a specific description of why the financial system just broke and why we should be careful. Raul took us through history as he drew comparisons to our present day problems, which include rising inflation, commodity shortages, commodity prices, and energy crisis to that of the economic environment for the duration of World War II. Raul presented the framework that our present day economic situation has been repeated more than once in history. And from a historic attitude, we can have a fantastic concept of what to expect. This may not be pretty and we should prepare. However, before we listen to Raul, if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button as we put out day by day content to keep you up to date on the market. World War II was a fascinating period because like COVID, the entire world had basically been stuck at home or been on, you know, on battlefields. Everyone came back. There was no supply of, of commodities and goods. Global supply chains were broken and everybody came back and started consuming again. And guess what? Inflation went up to 13% or something, uh, maybe even higher. And that period was fascinating because interest rates went up. And the first thing that happened was the economy went straight back into recession and rates and inflation went negative because it was a massive tightening of monetary conditions. You raised the cost of goods on people and didn't raise their salaries enough. People couldn't get the goods that they wanted exactly like now and everything collapsed. So we went back into recession and then eventually some better times and I'll come back into the 1940s and 50s because I think it's a really important parallel that most people misunderstand. The next time we saw anything remotely like this was 1974. A lot of people tell you it's the 70s again, inflation, inflation. Well, the inflation episode we had in the late 70s was driven by demographics. That was the baby boomers entering the workforce all at the same time. It was the largest demand shock the world had ever seen. And we had a supply shock of these oil crisis of the Arab oil embargo. That's not repeating now. What is actually more similar is 1974. 1974 was the Arab oil embargo. The price of oil tripled and interest rates went up. Inflation shot up. And the immediate effect was the economy went down the toilet. Almost do not pass go. The stock market fell 50% and the ISM survey, which is a good guide to the business cycle. It's the Institute of Supply Managers survey. Anytime it crosses below 50, suggests the economy is getting weak. A recession comes at about 47. It hit 30, which was the lowest in all history. And it happened in a space of four months. It went from roughly where it is today, which is around 55, and went to the lowest level in four months, based on exactly the same kind of setup we've got now. People are still thinking inflation goes on forever. It did not, and it did not in the 1940s either. Then the next one up is 1984. 1984, we saw um, an issue where global trade, there was a huge amount of trade disputes. The dollar was pretty strong, like it is now. Interest rates were going up and inflation was high. And everybody was fearing, looking back and saying, oh, we don't want the early 80s, late 70s again, the inflation, inflation. So Volcker was tightening rates too much and the economy collapsed. It didn't go to recession because the Fed quickly started cutting rates, but the dollar went up a lot more and created a lot more problems. We ended up with the Plaza Accord in 1985 when everybody had to stop the dollar going up from destroying the global economy. Right. So then the next time we see something similar was 2008. 2008, if you remember, the oil price was at $147. Inflation was 6%. The Fed had been cutting into that because the economy was imploding. 2018, exactly the same. Oil prices high, inflation high. The Fed were hiking rates, trying to tighten the balance sheet. And what happened is the economy rolled over really quickly again. Okay, so what's going on here? Why does this phenomena keep happening? Everyone extrapolates inflation out forever. What actually happens is that consumption falls, 
because we've tightened monetary conditions. So <clears throat> tightening money, monetary conditions to ordinary people means the cost of your mortgage has gone up at the fastest pace in history. Over a, a one year period, mortgage rates have never risen this fast. So any money you've borrowed has suddenly got much more expensive. Your wages haven't kept up with the cost of just basic services like food. So you're actually feeling poorer. So you can't consume as much and you start not consuming other things. People overextended on housing because they rushed into housing in 2020 and 2021. Um, and the rates have gone up for them. Also, just the, the rise in things like the cost of oil has mean, meant that you know gas prices, all of this stuff, and then the rise in the dollar, which is a monetary tightening. All of these things get together would suggest, and I put them on a chart, it suggests that the ISM is going back to 30, which is as it was in 1974, which is a terrifying fall. For those who might not know what ISM is, it stands for Institute of Supply Management. ISM provides a survey presenting one of the most dependable economic indicators available, presenting steerage to supply control experts, economists, analyst authorities, and commercial enterprise leaders. The survey includes asking customers and agencies that purchase items and services what their study is on the financial system, how much inventory is available, and pricing things of that nature. The surveys are effortlessly available online, and they generally tend to guide the financial system. There is a hyperlink in the description if you need to do more research, but let's concentrate on Raul as he explains its importance. And it's suggesting that if we're not careful, we could have a very sharp, nasty recession, meaning kind of a negative 5% GDP recession. It might be short, depending what the Fed does, and we'll come on to that in a bit. So we've got the setup that we've seen many times in the past. We've got the forward-looking indicators, this monetary tightening, suggesting we've got some real pain to come. Then the anecdotal evidence, we're seeing all the tech companies who were bulletproof laying off staff and giving earnings warnings because everybody can't raise prices enough so their margins are falling and people have overextended. Amazon said we've hired too many people. They're one of the biggest employees in the United States. Okay, this is not good. But the answer to higher prices is higher prices. And that's what's happened. And everybody's looking around you themselves saying, well, what's going to break when the when stuff like this happens, the market goes down, something's going to break. You know, we're looking, what bank is it? What hedge fund is it? The actual answer is it's the economy. The economy has just broken and the Fed are going to have to pivot. Leave a comment in case you found value in the content and hit the like button because that significantly helps the channel discover similar viewers like you. In case you're not subscribed, ensure to subscribe as we put out daily content to keep you up to date on the market news and conditions. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.